Hey, come on, aren't you thankful today for the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus? Come on, can we just give Jesus all the praise if you're glad to be in church today? You're glad for freedom. Come on, let's celebrate that. Woo! Yeah, so good to be in church with you today. It, you know, I don't know if you know it or not, it has been nine weeks, nine weeks since I last preached at City Hope uh, because April 28th was my last Sunday to preach here. Then we had Pastor Dino and Annalise spoke on Mother's Day and Pastor Caleb, Pastor Derek have spoken. We've had incredible guest speakers and, and staff pastors over the last several weeks, but I'm glad to be back, everybody. I am. Uh, this is home away from home. This is my home. I, y'all my favorite people on the planet, and I love you so much. I love you, and I'm so, so just so proud to be with you today and uh, so thankful for the time away that I did have and the rest that I was able to get. And um, um, I want to I wanna look into the camera and welcome everybody who's on the other side as well, because this, something fresh you guys should know. I met someone at first Wednesday, this past Wednesday, who lives in Norway, but they're here visiting family, and uh, they watch from Norway every week. And what an incredible privilege it is for us to be able to just broadcast the service. So let's welcome everybody on the other side of the camera today. We're glad you're with us. Thank God for you. And, uh, you know, it's the first week of the month. And for us here at church, we call it a tithing weekend. And we really kind of lean more towards the principle of tithe than we do the percentage of tithe. And what I mean by that is... When I call it a tithing week, it's the first week of the month. And so we do something called the first Wednesday of every month. It's a, it's a time where we get together. We do deeper worship, a, a deeper word, a challenging word for those who are believers. And then we serve on the first Saturday of every month. We go out. We, we meet the needs of our community. We just do everything we can to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We give God the first Saturday. And then on the first Sunday, we give him the first Sunday of our, of our, our tithes and our offerings. And many of you have given and committed to heart for the house. And I'm just grateful for that because it's a principle that we live by kind of permeates all throughout uh, our church. And, uh, and on the first Sunday, uh, a lot of things happen here, like water baptisms are happening today, everybody. Over, uh, oh, five, over 570 people have given their lives to Christ to Jesus this year. They've given their lives to Christ. It's time for them to take that next step of water baptism. And we want to celebrate that with you today. So if you made that decision after the service, stop by the baptism table. You don't have to sign up. Just, just show up. They'll give you. We've got everything you need from towels and shirts and, and shorts, all of that. You go to the bathroom, change into your baptism gear, and then, uh, and then uh, water baptized, and then you go back, change into what you came to church in today. And so it's a great way. It's, it's not just a great way to show your, your faith. It's actually a commanded way to show your faith in Christ Jesus. It's actually the next step you should take in your walk with the Lord. And then the next thing I want to, I'm just going to give you, point the way for you a minute, clear the path, tell you where we're headed over the next few weeks. One of my favorite times of the year is coming up four weeks from today. We kick off 21 days of prayer, everybody. 21 days of prayer, August the 4th through the 24th. And uh, I, was, I was in a pool store yesterday, um, a, an equipment store, getting some chemicals for the pool. And, and I was talking to a young man who works there but also goes to church here. He's, he's going to be a senior in high school this year. He went to 21 days of prayer for the first time back in January. They've been coming since at the movies of last year. And he went to 21 days of prayer. And he's like, man, when when are we going to be doing that 21 days of prayer again? And I'm like, we're doing it in August. He's like, it's already here. And I'm like, we do it twice a year, man. We do it two times a year. And so 21 days of prayer is coming up. And the reason I tell you about it four weeks in advance is because I want you to be preparing for it. Be getting ready for it. Be, be planning on how you're going to be able to be a part of that. And, and, uh, and I would love for you to show up every day. What happens is every weekday, 6 a.m., Monday through Friday here in the building. And then Saturday at 9 a.m. And then, of course, Sundays are our service times here at church. So that's coming up. And then, of course, if you don't know about it, Uh, You might see some red shirts today, and those red shirts are telling you that Serve Day is coming up this Saturday. Serve Day, it's National Serve Day, so what we do is we gather with thousands of churches across the nation, really, actually, it's around the world. Uh, We oftentimes see people, churches serving in every time zone across the world on this day, and we'll be out just being the hands and feet of Jesus. This is who we are. At the heart of City Hope is serving people. It's loving people. It's going out and making a difference. It's going out and just being the hands and feet of Jesus. So this Saturday is when that's happening. 
And if you want to know more about the opportunities to serve, you'll want to get the Serve Day app. All right. So if you want to, I'd love to encourage you to take out your phone, tap it on the disc in front of you, and there's a link there that's Serve Day app. Uh, um, the, uh, if you're an Android user, you, it'll take you to the, uh, to the Play Store. For everyone else in the world, you'll go to uh, the App Store. All right. And so uh, it's the Serve Day app. And what this does is it helps us mobilize what we're doing. Set it up for City Hope, and all of the projects will be there. You'll be able to see what time the project's happening, where it's happening, is it kid-friendly, what kind of equipment's needed, is it yard care, is it stuffing uh, care packages, what, whatever it might be. You'll be able to see it there on the app, and it's just a great tool for you to be able to, uh, to know what's happening in all the surf projects that are taking place. And then the last thing I'll mention, you'll see them in the lobby, is Serve Day shirts. You see the red shirts today. These are people who are already in the game. They're already serving. They're already using their gifts on Saturdays to make a difference. And, and those are available. If you're planning on serving, you can grab those today. They don't cost you anything because you already paid for it when you give in the offering. So the, what, the way we believe here at church is, uh, is that we're not going to take the money that you gave, buy a shirt, and resell it to you. Okay, that would... You already paid for it, so you just grab that on the way out. It's already been paid for in your offerings. And meet this Saturday. Everybody say, this Saturday, Saturday. 8.30 a.m. All right, that's where we're meeting, right here at the Cedar Elm campus. We got coffee, and we got donuts. We're going to juice you up, get you ready to go to make a difference in our community all across the, the, the area. All right? So if you got it, say, I got it. Got it. All right, well, we're... We're uh, talking today about God's vantage point. If you've got your notes, uh, there's some notes in your worship guide. You can also tap your phone on the disc in front of you, pull up digital notes as well. We're talking about God's vantage point. And, and it's this idea that God sees things that we don't see. He has a perspective that we don't have. And I love this passage in Isaiah chapter 55. God is talking here. And Isaiah is, is holding the pen. He's writing the words of God to the people of Israel. And, and God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways, your ways are not my ways, declares the Lord. So what he's saying is, I think differently than you think. I, I, I have a different plan than you have. And he goes on in verse 9 and says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, hey, guess what? My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. I have a different vantage point. I don't see it the way you see it. I have a different perspective. My angle is a different angle than you have. And I love that about our God, that he doesn't see things like we see them. And in fact, when, when God said this, things are not going well for Israel, right? They're, they're in captivity. They've been exiled. Uh, there had been all kinds of bad decisions idol worship, false gods, there's conflict, there's drama all across Israel. Things aren't going well for the people of Israel. And maybe you feel like that today. Maybe you feel like, man, my life's just full of drama, there's conflict, things aren't going well, I'm too far gone, God can't use somebody like me, God can never, he can't bless somebody like me, I don't have the goods, I'm damaged, I'm not valuable, but I, I, wanna, I wanna encourage you. Uh, even though you might only see things from one angle, we have a God who knows 360 degrees. He can tell everything about your situation. He has a different vantage point than you have. You might only see one angle for your kids, one angle for your marriage, one angle for your family, or one angle for, for your job, but we serve a God who says, I see something different. Amen. Oh, come on, I thought somebody would say amen. <laughs> Thank you, Annalise. He sees it differently than we see it. He, he has a different perspective, a different vantage point. And a vantage point is a place or a position that provides a larger, higher, broader perspective. That's what God has over your life. Hey, everybody, that's what God has over our city. That's what God has over the broken and the vulnerable and the marginalized and people who are, who are hurting. He has a different vantage point. It's kind of like... If you're a parent here today, if, if you have children, you have a vantage point your children don't have. Come on, say amen. amen. Right? You go, hey, it's the conversation you have with your kids over and over again. Hey, can you, ta can you take out the trash? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do it later. But see, I want you to do it now. 
That's why I'm asking you right now. If I wanted you to do it later, I would have asked you to do it later. Get up off the couch and take the trash out. Well, I'm going to do it later. Well, here's what you don't know. I have a vantage point you don't have. See, there's some nasty food up in that trash can. It's going to start stinking the house up if you don't take out the trash. Now, get up off the couch, right? <laughs> and all the parents are blessed right now. You're like, hallelujah. <laughs> well, you have a vantage point, right? Or, or maybe if you, uh, you, know, if you have a, a, a kid like, like one of mine who's just like, Dad, it's only $100. <laughs> The last time I checked, $100 is a lot of money. Now, the, the problem with this is you're 12 years old. You ain't never been 41. I've been 12 before. You ain't never paid a mortgage. You don't buy the groceries around here. You, you, don't, have a, you don't have all these different uh, insurance payments, all that. You don't know nothing. I've got a vantage point that you don't have. $100 is a lot of money. Come on. Or, or maybe it's the single person who goes and talks to the married person. How do you know when, when you found the right person? And the married person goes, you just know. And the single person goes, I'm going to punch you in the face right now. <laughs> How am I supposed to know? How am I supposed to know that they're the right person? Because I think all of them are the right person. She's cute. She's cute. She needs me. God, she needs me. She really needs me. <laughs> it, but what is it? The married person has a vantage point. It's just like, you just know. Like when you, met, when you meet the right person, you just... Just know. And, and so there's a vantage point that, that we have as married people, single people don't have. God wants us to see with his vantage point. He wants us to see other people with his vantage point. Now, here's, here's something I need you to get today. Every one of you in this room, every one of us, we were born with a disadvantage. We are disadvantaged because of sin. We're disadvantaged because we were far from God. Man, we, we have all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We're disadvantaged. But there's good news. God, he loved us so much he sent his one and only son. You weren't too far gone. You weren't damaged goods. You were still valuable and he sent his son Jesus to pay the price. And because Jesus paid the price for us, guess what everybody? We get to move from disadvantaged to advantaged. Now we have an advantage through the power of Jesus Christ in our life. It's pretty powerful. We have this advantage, and now we have the, because we have an advantage of mercy and grace and salvation, he gives us a calling. He gives us a mandate to go out and to help other people find that same advantage. That's, that's what he does for us. And so uh, that's why we do serve day. It's why we've got the red shirts all in the room today. It's, it's, why, we're, it's why I'm galvanizing you as a church today. I'm saying, hey, it's, it's time to serve. It's time to help people see themselves the way God sees them. It's time to help people see that they, have an, they, they could have an advantage in life, that God loves them so much. It's, it's why we go out and we, and we mow the yards for the elderly, elderly. It's why we visit the nursing homes. It's why we build the wheelchair ramps for people who need them in a season of their life right now. It's why we stuff care packages for the homeless and the broken and the vulnerable and we serve widows and we serve orphans and we serve single moms. Why? Because we're just trying to give them advantage in life. We're trying to give them an advantage in life. Are you with me today? That's why we do what we do. So what, here's, here's the plan. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the book of Acts. If you've got your Bible, I'd love for you to, to take that out. Um, if it's in your notes, you can follow there, follow on the, on the screen with me as well. In fact, I'd love for you to bring your Bible every week. And um, the next series that we do in August is going to be on the Bible. And we're going to talk about what the Bible's really all about. I think we need that in this season that we're in. And so um, follow along with me in Acts chapter 3. I think this is a a great example of serve day. It's a great example of serving other people. It's a, a, it's a story about Peter and John. And by this time in Acts 3, Jesus has already lived a perfect life on the earth. He, he died on the cross. On the third day, he rose again. He walked around earth for about 40 days appearing to people. And then he ascended to the Father. And on, on 50 days after he after he. Uh, had risen from the dead, the church was born. 
on the day of Pentecost. And now, here, here we are in Acts chapter 3. The church is alive. People are being added to the church every single day. It's growing by the thousands. It's gaining steam and momentum. People are turning their faith to Jesus Christ. Peter and John are just going about their everyday life. They're going about their everyday life of worship and teaching and fellowship and breaking bread with the other believers. And in Acts chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. In Jewish culture, they pray multiple times a day. They always turn toward Jerusalem when they pray. And so this, was, this actually still happens to this day. They're going to the prayer meeting at 3 o'clock. Well, as they approached the temple, they saw a lame, a man lame from birth. Now this, if he's lame from birth, he's, he's disadvantaged. And he, he doesn't have the same ability as everybody else. He's, he's like all of us were born disadvantaged. This man was born disadvantaged. And his friends would carry him along the street and lay him beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, as was his custom Every day of his life, he was dropped off at the, at the temple courts, at the, at the gate. Now, here's the thing. He was lame, which meant he couldn't go inside the temple. That's why they dropped him off outside the temple. He's, he's, think about this. He's so close to the presence of God. He's so close to having a relationship with God. He's so close to an encounter with God, except he's just halfway there. They drop him off outside the temple every single day of his life. Hey, church, I'm so glad we don't leave people halfway. Come on, we can't leave people halfway. We can't be the church that just says you have to wait out there. We can't be the church that says you got to clean up your life before you come here today. We can't be the church like the, like the, the kids in Forrest Gump says you, you can't sit here. We can't, we can't, we're not going to be that church. We exist for people who aren't here yet. For the lost and the broken. Every day, they're dropping him off outside the gate. But we don't just meet people's physical needs. We meet their spiritual needs. That's what we're trying to do as a church. So verse 3 says that as Peter and John were passing by this lame man, this man with a disadvantage, he asked them for some money. I mean, y'all got something? You got some change you can spare? I mean, you got $5? I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a bus ticket. I mean, you, you, you got... You got anything you can spare? Is anything you can give me? And this is all he's known, by the way. Because he's lame from birth. He's placed at the temple gate every day. And we don't know why he's there. We don't know if he's being exploited. We don't know if he's part of human trafficking, which is still a major crisis in our world today. Over 40 million people in human trafficking. We don't know why he's there. But he's asking for money. He's asking for a handout. And from our vantage point, we might say, bro, I pass by you every day. Every day you ask me for money. If you would work at, as hard at getting a job as you did asking me for money, you wouldn't be sitting here today. Dude, I, I, you're not my responsibility. This is, you're not my problem. From our vantage point, it's kind of like, get a job, bro. But I want you to watch what happens here. Verse 4 says, they looked at him intently. They looked at him intently, didn't take their eyes off of him. And they, and they said, look here, look here, look at me. He's ashamed. He's broken. Man, I'm, I'm just a nobody. I'm just disadvantaged. I don't, ha I don't have what everybody else has. I don't have, he's, look at me. And the man, the lame man looked up at them eagerly. He's expecting a gift. All right, all right, all right man, what y'all got? And, and Peter says, we don't have any money. Okay, well, maybe you don't have any money. You got some Whataburger? <laughs> you got a gift card? What you got? I don't have any money, but I'll give you something else. I don't have any money, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you something better than money. I, I don't have any money, but I, I know this. I know you're disadvantaged, but what if I gave you an advantage? I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. He said, get up off of that thing and dance till you feel better. Get up off of that thing. Try to release the precious thing. Walk, he said. Walk. I, I love this. I love the boldness. 
I love the boldness of, of Peter right here. And, and the, Peter took the lame man by the hand. I love this image. You were asking for a handout, but hey, I'm, I'm giving you a hand up. Come on, everybody. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to pull you to a better place in your life. I'm trying to pull you to a place of advantage in your life. And as he did, the man's feet and his ankle bones were healed and they were strengthened so that he came up with a leap. He didn't come up like, oh, no, no, he, he jumped up. Man, he, something was different about this man, and he stood there for a moment, and he began walking. Man ain't never walked in his life. He starts walking, and then walking, leaping, praising God. He went to the temple with them. Hey, everybody, this may be the first time that he's ever been in the presence of God. It may be the first time that he's ever donned the door of a church and he said, I'm going today. I finally get to go experience the power and the presence of God. What a thought. And when the people inside saw him walking, they heard him praising God. They go, oh, that's the lame man. Oh, that, that, that's the beggar that they had so often seen at the beautiful gate. And they were inexpressibly surprised. They were taken back. What? How is this possible? Man, I've known him since he was born. He's always been lame. How's he walking around right now? How is he doing what he's doing? And they all rushed down into Solomon's hall where he was holding tightly to Peter and John. And everyone stood there awed by the wonderful thing that had happened. And then Peter saw his opportunity. What's the opportunity? Peter's opportunity is to give them an advantage let me tell you something. Let me tell you about Jesus. Uh, let me tell you what just happened right here. And, and he says, men of Israel, what is so surprising about this? Why, why are you in awe about this lame man walking? Because like 50 days ago, Jesus was doing this all the time. Jesus was here healing people all the time. Why are you surprised? Why are you acting like you've never seen this before? And why look at us as, as if I'm the one who did it? Why are you looking at me like at me and John like we... We, in our own power and godliness, have anything to do with this man walking. I love this. He says, no, it's, it's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of our ancestors who brought glory to his servant, Jesus. Hey, when we go out and serve this Saturday, everybody, it's not for the glory of City Hope Church. It's not because we're trying to make a name for ourselves. It's for the glory of Jesus Christ. And that's why Peter said, I refer to Jesus. Yeah. Hey, when we go out on Saturday, everybody, we're referring to Jesus. Hey, I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to help you, but let me tell you about somebody who does. I, I, I don't know. I don't have all the answers, but let me about, tell you about someone who, who does have all the answers. Let me refer you to Jesus by the way that I'm loving you, by the way that I'm serving you, by the way that I'm giving. Let me tell you that there's a man who knows. He has a vantage point about your life that I don't have. He understands your past, your present, your future. He knows everything that you've been through and he loves you and he values you and you're not too far gone and you have a destiny and you have a purpose. You're not alone. I re let me tell you about Jesus. Let me refer you to Jesus. So you've been waiting on a fill in the blank note for the whole introduction. That was just the introduction. Let, let me give you the first fill in the blank. All right. I think it's the first. Here we go. Here's what I want for you. This is my prayer for you as we come into serve day, that you would find purpose through serving, that you would find your purpose, that come Saturday afternoon when you're laying your head down on your pillow at night, you go, man, my life makes sense. I'm doing what I've been called to do. This was the best day of my life. I know why I'm here. See, here's the thing. People, people were so used to seeing this, this man, this lame man, in his position, based on his position. Oh, you, you the beggar. You're, that's his position. Oh, you're, you're unemployed. You're jobless. Oh, you're the lame man. You can't walk. Oh, you're on the wrong side of the tracks. Position. This day... Peter and John, they saw him a little bit different. See, everybody else saw him based on his lameness, not his legacy. I want to tell you today, 
For someone in this room, you need to know that God doesn't refer to you based on your position. Man, he's referring to you based on the potential that's inside of you and the purpose that he put inside of you when you were in your mother's womb. That's how he refers to you. And that's why we do so much of what we do here at church is is built around our growth track, trying to help people discover who they are, what their purpose is in life, why they were created by God, the spiritual gifts, the passions, the talents that he's put inside of every single person. Today is step one of the growth track. We'll talk about vision and values and uh, accountability, who do I answer to, and and church finances, all of those things today after every service. Next week, we'll talk about the spiritual gifts, all about you, what he's put inside of you, how you can discover the more that God has for your life. And so if if you're kicking the tires at church trying to figure out, is this for me? Is this a church that I can belong in? Is this a church that I can lock arms with? Go to the growth track today. And don't just go to church. Let's be the church. Let's be the church. Let's be the church. Use our gifts. And when you do that, you'll end up like Peter and John. And I'm not, I'm not, it's not just preacher talk. I want you to hear this. Because Peter and John were willing to be used by God, they were used by God. You want to be used by God? Just be willing. God, I'm, a, I'm open. I'm a vessel. I just want to be used by you. Whatever you can do, Lord. If you can do anything, Lord, do it through me. I'm willing. I'm available. I want you to use my life today. And here's the message of Serve Day. Is that Serve Day is not just about changing a person's external condition. It's not just about mowing the yard. It's not just about taking care of some needs around their house. It's not just about uh, handing out a bottle of water at an intersection. No, it's about giving them an advantage that will change their eternal condition. That they will end up in heaven because you did some sort of random act of kindness that led them to a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you change, if, if we change their external condition but don't change their eternal condition, we lose. Because social justice without spiritual justice is not justice. If we take care of all of their needs, but they don't make it to heaven, we lose. If we build a a widow a brand new house and she don't go to heaven, we lost. We lose. We do it to help people come to know their creator the one who gave her their, his life for them. And so the question is, can't, do you really think, Pastor Ben, do you really think we can change someone's eternity by serving them? Yes. Yeah, I do. I do, and I love what Pastor Dino uh, Rizzo said. You know, there's, there's um, you never know what a random act of kindness will do for somebody. But Pastor Dino said that When nothing is beneath us, then nothing is beyond us. When nothing is beneath us, nothing is beyond us. When we come together and we stoop down and we care for people and we love people and we, and we wash the feet of the broken and the hurting and the vulnerable. And I'm not, t- yeah, yeah, you could do it physically. I'm talking about just taking care of their needs, loving people right where they are. Nothing is beyond us as a church. And so uh, years ago, I watched a, a message from Pastor Dino. I mean, the, the message is probably 10 or 15 years old. But at the end of this message, he shared really the heartbeat of serve, a testimony of when they had first started their church in Baton Rouge years ago, of, of the difference serving somebody can make. And so I thought I would share that story with you today, but uh, rather than me share it, I want him to share it. So take a look at this video. When Dylan and I were pastoring and trying to love our city, we were in a unique time in our city. The spiritual climate was kind of different. There's some turmoil and just some, some things going on. And I felt sometimes that people were being judged and not being loved enough by God. And so we, we just said, let's just go out and bless people. Let's just start serving people. Just love, just be the hands and feet of Jesus to our community. Let's extend grace and mercy. 
So we heard about an idea that a church did. And so we, we got together and uh, I was heading into summer. And so we got to, her and I got together. We asked some college kids to join us. And so we would go out on Fridays and Saturdays uh, in our outreach and we would, um, we would ice down Cokes and water and we would stand at intersections or crosswalks or where people were gathered. And we would give out free Cokes and free water, just something free. We don't, didn't want any money, no strings attached. Just blessing it. And about 90% of the people would take it. Some people, you know, be like, you know, you go up to the wind, hey, you like a free Coke? Like, get away! You know, a little nervous. And, you know, it's cool, it's cool. We were cool, though. And, 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 and then someone want to give you money. We're like, no, no, we don't want any money. That's the opposite. We want to do something for you. It's not about money at all. We just want to bless you. And we, 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 we put these little cards together. Uh, we have them here at Church Highland. It's our Acts of Kindness cards. We had something like that that just kind of said, you look too thirsty, you know, you know to, to pass. And, and we put a little thing on there. You know, hey, if you ever need us, we're here for you. Just want to be a blessing. And then on the other side, we did that Mother Teresa quote that, you know, the world's not changed through, you know, big things, but through small acts of kindness. So we would give those out and give out that free water, give out that free Coke. And uh, we did it one Friday. I mean, it was hot, boy, hot in Louisiana. We're back at the, at the church washing out ice chests, me and the lens, a couple of kids. An old truck pulls up, me like a beater truck. A lady jumps out and says, how y'all doing? Who's the preacher? Where's the preacher at? And I was like, well, I, I guess that would be me. And she's like, how you doing? I, I'm from Macomb, Mississippi. I, I do outreach. And I'm the outreach coordinator of our church in Macomb, Mississippi. And she said, uh, we do outreach. I said, well, tell me about that outreach. Well, I get up in this here truck and we go over Walmart on Friday and Saturday nights where teenagers hang up. And I get out back in my truck, got me a bullhorn, and I just preach and tell them they're all going to hell. Just everybody's going to hell. And, wow. How's that working for you? She said, well, it's not working too good. They run off and then they end up behind Sonic and we chase them over to Sonic. And then they go, go over to the Dollar General and we find them behind the Dollar General. Then we just ride around all night preaching out the window bullhorn. Everybody going to hell. Wow. Praise, praise the Lord. Interesting. Come Mississippi. God be with thee. She said, I think I want to try this. I think that's a good idea. And uh, so she, I gave her some instructions, gave her some cards. Hey, before you leave, leave the bullhorn in, in the truck. Leave the bullhorn in the truck. And so she, uh, so we go on. We do our outreaches. The Lord is my witness. Four weeks later, five weeks later, in about August now, we have washing out ice chests. Truck pulls up, says, preacher, preacher, I got to tell you something. I got to tell you what happened. She said, we did that outreach. Left the bullhorn in the truck. Did that outreach. She said, uh, we went out and just love people. Just tell people how much God loves them. Just loved on people. Just talk to people. Just talk to people. Just there for them. She said, uh, next Sunday after we did the outreach, a mom and two daughters showed up at our church. Said they just had to come see a church, do something for them for free. At the end of the service, that mom and daughters came down, met our preacher, and uh, and, and gave their life to Christ. And, and then on Sunday night, not that same night on Sunday night church, uh, the, the, the daddy came with them. The close of the service, he came down forward, talked to the preacher, told the preacher, I ain't been in church in 25 years. He said, but I had to come see a church that would do something for my family because we ain't never done nothing for y'all. And he received Christ. As a matter of fact, we had a little impromptu baptism, got the trough out the back, and filled it up with water, just brought everybody into war, just dunked everybody right there, come Mississippi. And she was fantastic. That family came to Christ and got baptized. She said, Preacher, she said, on Tuesday morning, that dad of that family, he didn't wake up. He went to be with Jesus in his sleep. She said, We did the funeral at the church on that Thursday. At the close of the funeral, that mom and those two daughters walked up in front of the church and set four Coke cans on top of that casket and said, because you loved us and because you cared for them, their daddy and my husband is in heaven with Jesus Christ because you just never know. It is the power of the gospel. It is the power of the name of Jesus. Our hand extended to prove it impacts eternity. You never know. Never underestimate your gift. Never underestimate your gift. Never underestimate your sir. God is all up in it. Amen. Amen. Come on. Can we just give God praise for a testimony? I love that because what it does is it builds faith in us. Man, what if, what if God used me like that? Well, what, what if my serve made a difference like that what if my serve 
got somebody to heaven. I love Pastor Dino's heart. We call him Father Teresa. Because he just sets the example. He sets the bar so high for serving people, for loving people well. And I wonder how many people are like that family across Wichita Falls today. They're just waiting for somebody to give them an advantage. They're waiting for somebody. They're waiting to be healed. They're waiting for hope. They're waiting to be helped. They're waiting for someone to give an advantage. They're waiting for somebody to reach down and pull them up by the hand and and help them walk out of their misery and walk out of their pain and walk out of their struggle. How many people across Texoma are just waiting? So I want to give you four thoughts as we close today. Four quick thoughts about God's vantage point. If we're going to go out and serve this Saturday and, and for the rest of the history of City Hope Church, let it be our war cry. Let it be woven into the fabric of our DNA and who we are as a church. We need to understand four things. Number one, that we have a mandate to love people. We have a mandate, not a suggestion, not a great idea, not something that I think that it would be great if you did this. It is a mandate to love people, and there's only one response to a mandate. Yes. It's not conditional. I don't get to negotiate the mandate. The answer is yes, God, yes, I'll do it. I'll go where you want me to do. Go. And, and, and listen, if I'm, I'm trying to push us a little bit. I'm nudging us, and I'm saying no excuses. Pastor, you just don't know. I haven't been a good Christian lately. Man, I haven't really been serving God. Man, I got some drama in my life. I just don't feel like I'm really set up to help people right now. No, no, no. You don't have to be perfect to be the hands and feet of Jesus. You, you, you don't have to have it all together before you can go help somebody, before you can go serve somebody. You don't have to have your, your act together. You are a miracle waiting to happen, and your availability gives God an opportunity to do a miracle through you, to work through you. We have a mandate. We're on a mission to love people. It's not the great suggestion that Jesus gave us. It is the great commission that when we go to serve, Guess what? It's a commission. He's right there with us. He's serving with us. We're in it together. It's a commission that we're there serving people, loving people with no strings attached. It's not about you coming to our church. It's not about you walking through the doors of City Hope. There's a lot of great churches in our community. This is about you coming to a relationship with Jesus Christ. We're just trying to serve you, help you, love you. We're just trying to reach people. Can, can I ask you, would we want to be known for the opposite? Oh, y'all, y'all that church don't care. Y'all that church, you, you, y'all don't ever help nobody. Y'all all about y'all. No, 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 no. We're on a mission to give people an advantage to help them up. <sighs> because we've been helped up. We're mobilized. If we're going to do this with God's vantage point, we need to know that we, we are mobilized to love people. Man, we're, on, we're in motion. We, we are working. We are serving. We, we've got the serve day app. Man, you log on to that thing. You find that serve project that you want to be a part of. Do it today because I promise you they'll fill up. Man, you, you don't see a serve group that you want to be a part of? Start your own. Pastor Derek will help you love for you to be a part of what's happening here. And this is an all call. It's, it's everybody. I would love for us to run out of red shirts, to not have enough because we caught the heart of God in serving people. And if we do this, if we understand we have a mandate, we're on a mission, we're mobilized, then when we do that, the miraculous awaits us when we love people. The miraculous that you never know what God will do through you. You never know how he'll use your serve. You never know how he'll work through your, the, the way that you love people, the random acts of kindness, those God loves you cards that are out in the lobby as you leave today. You never know how God might use you. And the greatest miracle of all is salvation. It's the greatest miracle. Amen, everybody. Come on, can we give God praise today? Let's believe God for some miracles this Saturday. would love for you to bow your heads with me, close your eyes. If you say, Pastor Ben, I'm in. 
I'm ready to serve. Come on, just slip up your hand and let me pray for you today all across this building. I'm, I'm ready to serve. This Saturday, I'm there. God, I pray for every hand that's up today. People who are saying, I'm going all in. I'm, uh, th this is my opportunity to find my purpose through serving, to find my purpose through making a difference in the lives of people around me. God, I pray for blessing. I pray for influence. I pray for your presence and your protection. The prayer of Jabez over every hand that's lifted today as we go out and we make a difference. We go out and we serve. We go out and we love. We go out and we help. Thank you, Lord, for your power and your presence over them today. In Jesus' name, amen. With your heads still bowed, if you're here today and you would say, Pastor Ben, I'm the lame man. I'm, I'm sitting at a disadvantage today because I'm far from God. I'm, I'm so distant from God in my relationship. I feel the weight of my sin, the weight of guilt, condemnation, the weight of my life, and I'm ready to surrender my life to Jesus today. I'm ready to give him complete control of my life. I'm ready to make him my Lord, my Savior, my best friend. I'm ready to go all in with Jesus today. I'm tired of sitting at the gate. I'm tired of being lame. I'm ready to walk. I'm ready to start a new walk with Jesus today. If that's you, on the count of three, boldly slip up your hand. One, two, three. Come on. All over this place, slip it up today. I see you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Who else would say that's me today? Seven. Any, anybody else? I'm going all in today. I see you up there. Eight, nine, ten. So proud of every one of you. Every hand that's up today. Your right decision. Best decision of your life. All across this place, say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I give you my life. I surrender. I give you control. Lead me. Guide me. Direct me. Be my Lord. My Savior. My best friend. And from this day forward, I'll serve you. I'll live for you the best that I know how. Thank you for being my Lord and my Savior. Today, everything changes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, church. Let's give Jesus the best praise we can today. He's worthy of it. Amen.